All right, this video is on genetics. So we're gonna be looking at things like uh, DNA, RNA, uh, amino acids, and the sex chromosomes. Okay. So as we think about DNA, the first thing we wanna know is the first thing we see on the screen, which is DNA is a molecule that contains genetic instructions. Okay, so we at least wanna know that. Um, the term double helix refers to the structure formed by double stranded molecules of nucleic acids such as DNA. The realization that the structure of DNA is that of a double helix led to the understanding of base pairing by which genetic information is stored and copied in living organisms and is widely considered one of the most important scientific discoveries of the 20th century. Double helix is the description of the structure of a DNA molecule. A DNA molecule consists of two strands that wind around each other like a twisted ladder. Each strand has a backbone made of alternating groups of sugar and phosphate groups. Attached to each sugar is one of four bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, or thymine. These two, the two strands are held together by bonds between the bases, adenine forming a base pair with thymine and cytosine forming a base pair with guanine. Okay, so we need to know how those, how that base pairing works, right? Um, so that's something you're going to need to memorize. Adenine always forms a base with thymine, cytosine always forms a base with guanine. Okay, so now let's look at RNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. It's a polymeric molecule essential in various biological roles in coding, decoding, regulation, and expression of genes. RNA and DNA are nucleic acids, and along with lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates, constitute the four major macromolecules essential for all known forms of life. Like DNA, RNA is assembled as a chain of nucleotides, but unlike DNA, it is more often found in nature as a single strand folded onto itself rather than a paired double strand. Cellular organisms use messenger RNA, which you'll see referred to just as mRNA, to convey genetic information using the letters G, U, A, and C to denote the nitrogenous bases of guanine, uracil, adenine, and cytosine that directs synthesis of specific proteins. Uh, you might notice there that uh, it's uracil for RNA. We'll talk about that more here in a second. DNA and RNA are different from their structure, functions, and stabilities. DNA has four nitrogen bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, and for RNA, instead of thymine, it has uracil, which is what I was just referring to a second ago. Also, DNA is double-stranded and RNA is single-stranded, which is why RNA can leave the nucleus and DNA cannot. There is one single type of DNA, while there are many types of RNA that have different functions, such as messenger RNA, which carries the DNA message to the cytoplasm, and transfer RNA, which carries amino acids to messenger RNA and to the ribosomes. So that's a lot. The main points that you want is that RNA is single strand. Uh, it's used in coding, decoding, regulation, and expression of genes, and that it also has the four nitrogen bases, but it has a uracil rather than thymine. Okay, let's talk about the amino acids. Okay, twenty percent of the human body is made up of protein. Protein plays a crucial role in almost all biological processes, and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. A large proportion of our cells, muscles, and tissue is made up of amino acids, meaning they carry out many important bodily functions, such as giving cells their structure. They also play a key role and the transport and the storage of nutrients. Amino acids have an influence on the function of organs, glands, tendons, and arteries. 
They are furthermore essential for healing wounds and repairing tissue, especially in the muscles, bones, skin, and hair. So again, just to repeat, make sure we have this. Proteins are large, complex molecules that are critical for the normal functioning of the human body. They are essential for the structure, function, and regulation of the body's tissues and organs. Proteins are made up of hundreds of smaller units called amino acids that are attached to one another by something called peptide bonds forming a long chain. It's not a bad way to think of a protein as a string of beads where each bead is an amino acid. And then finally we have the 46 chromosomes. In humans, each cell normally contains 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. 22 of these pairs, called autosomes, look the same in both males and females. The 23rd pair, which is the sex chromosomes, differ between males and females.